Hello there and welcome. In this video I'm going to go over all assault rifles in Jacked Alliance 3. This video is the second part of my All Weapons Explained series. In the first part I went over all handguns and shotguns. This time we're going to go over all those wonderful, quite samey looking guns and I, I promise you they aren't the same at all. There's a lot of difference there that we're going to explore in this video. There's timestamps down below leading to each and every gun that I explained. So if you're out for a specific model, go there. First off, before we begin, a couple of general things about assault rifles. So, assault rifles practically all have three modes of fire, with a few exceptions. Single shot, burst fire, which is three bullets at once, and auto fire. Burst fire cuts the damage per bullet by 50%, but in a grand total, this way of firing deals 150% total damage. Auto fire cuts the damage per bullet by even 75%, but since it's 15 bullets you're firing, the total damage is 300% off a single bullet. If you would hit every bullet, which is really, really um, unlikely. The Extra bonus on auto fire is it suppresses the enemy even if you would miss every bullet which costs the enemy action points on his next turn. So all in all the more precision you have the more benefit you have from these automatic fire um, modes and the single shot mode boasts the highest damage per bullet. So that being said assault rifles have another big advantage they can pierce light armor. Whatever caliber you use, they always have light armor piercing, which makes them pretty decent against enemies that are somewhat armored. They also use two different types of caliber in the ammo, uh, 7.62 and 5.56 ammo. And my recommendation there is if you like to use assault rifles heavily in your team, mix these ammo types really well in your team because otherwise you might end up with an ammo scarcity if all your guns or most of your guns prefer to use one of those calibers. My experience is you just don't loot enough of these things. You can then either swap over to other weapons or you just take your gunpowder and craft yourself some ammo. That being said, I made pretty good experiences with mixing this up and using as many different gun types as possible, then ammo scarcity isn't that much of a big deal. Good, let's finally get into the actual gun models. I'm gonna start out with the AK-47. It's the first gun you get your hands on in the game. It has no special features except for slower condition loss. Yep, it's totally average. It has 20 damage per shot. It costs 6 action points for a burst attack, which means 5 for a single shot. It has a range of 24, which is the standard range for assault rifles. A low or okay crit chance, and its biggest gripe for me personally, the aiming bonus, the native aim aiming bonus is really low. It's not documented here, but most assault rifles do better than this. The big advantage of this gun, though, is it has really a lot of modification slots. You can mod the stock to make it an Overwatch gun, you can mount various different scopes. You don't have all the options available, but a decent amount of ways to mod this gun even into Overwatch or a more precision-heavy playstyle. You can add, expand the magazine, you can even add a vertical grip, you can also add a grenade launcher, and vertical grip and grenade launcher you don't find that on too many guns. You even can add a bipod on this, so the versatility of this rifle is amazing. You get also to use tactical devices, and last but not least you can even put a suppressor on it, or recoil boosters or compensators. Cannot put a, a improvised suppressor uh, though on it, which sucks given the fact that this is a weapon you find in the early game. That being said, it's a pretty decent standard model if you don't know what you're uh, going to specialize yourself into, because you can specialize the gun to your own liking. It's quite parts heavy, and like I said, the biggest downside for me personally is that it has a really bad basic accuracy rating, but you can mod that if you'd like to. So, the big brother of this one is the AK-74, and in my humble opinion, it's a straight-up upgrade. Yes, you lose two modification slots, but you gain 10 points of damage per bullet and another level of armor penetration. You're using still the same 7.62mm ammo, so this thing spits out death in a really, really impressive way. It has, as far as I remember, uh, the highest, if not... Uh, 
or well among the highest or if not the highest damage per bullet combined with the medium armor penetration which you won't find on any other assault rifle that's pretty impressive on its own you can even play it as a improvised suppressor gun so it's really cheap to make this silent gun comes with grenade launcher or bipod you see you're losing a little bit of the versatility of the 47 model here but apart from that all the important modifications are there you can mod it into a overwatch gun or a snipery gun which is really cool you can expand the mag and most importantly you have also the option to go into light stock for even more overwatch fun because this rifle is really good in overwatch it has so much damage on single bullets that you can really dish out a lot of death even with burst fire and while not hitting too many bullets so the ar-15 while at the first glance the damage looks really really low that's for one since we're comparing it with the ak-74 but for another thing yes this is among the lower damage per bullet assault rifles but it comes with a lot of advantages first off it is even more cost efficient so the burst attack costs five so single shot costs four you always have to look at these costs if it's i mean if it states bursts actually one action point less per single bullet which means this thing is almost in pistol range in terms of single bullet fire and it has a 12 person crit chance this is uh, so much for assault rifles so you have as a downside no auto fire mod on this uh, on, on this rifle but since i'm not that much of a big fan of it anyways and you can mod it into it by adding the bump stock in it that's not much of a big deal this gun comes with either a higher range modification which even extends the aiming bonus or you could go short range with it with the barrel modifications which is also an amazing thing to do because then you have a assault rifle that can dish out so many bullets in short range in such uh, with such a low amount of action points that it really rivals um, handguns in close quarters given the fact that it has a built-in armor penetration really good stuff we can expand the mag pretty usual thing for all those we can add in scopes and we can also add in overwatch mods that's pretty usual for assault rifles the interesting thing is that we even can get in a really cheap aiming bonus modification that you don't see on all guns so on top of that we can add in a grenade launcher vertical grip or tactical grip which is a real wide array of different options on this slot you don't get that much on all of these we get to use tactical devices even the uv dot which makes this gun even more precise and it comes with suppressor gameplay or compensator gameplay which is really good given the fact how cost efficient per shot you are with this gun the compensator upgrade is really amazing on this one my personal opinion right the downside of this one is outright it's low um, damage up front but if you mod your mercenary to a high crit rate and such things this is an excellent choice so also to note it is the first gun that we're introducing that uses 5.56 millimeter ammo all right let's get on over to the famas that's the first bullpup rifle that we're introducing these all have a lower um attack point cost that's a pretty common thing on these it is among the lowest her um, damage uh, rifles and overall well i don't like it too much most guns overperform the famas you can mod it for overwatch or precision it doesn't have too bad stats overboard, but its low damage is really, really unattractive. It's a less noisy weapon, but I think that's not much of a big advantage here. So we get to use the vertical grip, we get to use tactical devices, a bipod is also built in, but I don't really would know why I would use this gun unless I really don't have any other assault rifles using the same caliber. Just my personal opinion. It is okay if you don't have anything else, but hardly more than that. Also move on over to the AUG, which is basically the bigger and better brother of the FAMAS. 
it is a very similar um, thing. It has a pretty low damage per bullet, but not as crappy as the FAMAS. It has a really high in built in range, though, and it comes with a low attack cost bonus, uh, a low attack cost per shot, which is pretty common for those bullpup rifles. It has a stupidly high aiming bonus and is therefore among the most accurate assault rifles that you can go for. You get to go for suppressor but no improvised suppressor here this gun is costy if you want to mod it silent it can come with a grenade launcher and it has a another range upgrade for the um for the barrel and this is really unique it comes in with a built-in bipod you can not find this on any other assault rifle this gun becomes stupidly accurate when you're prone with this one and you're aiming some alternatively it can be modded for short range combat which is really good because here again we already have a low attack cost this modifies this uh, characteristic of it even more which makes this thing a brutal monster in close quarter combat the grip is fixed there's nothing but a vertical grip but the vertical grip is an amazing upgrade which makes your aiming more cost efficient i love this we have a wide array of different scopes which can make this gun a real sniper rifle with very low amount of damage per bullet but it is very attractive to have a precise assault rifle because like i stated in the intro of the video your burst fire actually deals 150 person damage per shot at the end of the equation so if you hit all of your three bullets you get out way more damage and a high precision helps you with that therefore this weapon is really good in getting the gun getting the bullets into the enemy um reliably i would even go as far uh, to say that the AUK is one of the best guns to go auto fire if you really want to do that. We can also expand the mag, but that's nothing really to say about that. And tactical devices go without saying, they're always the same. Right, I really like the AUK. It's a very, very interesting gun with 5.56mm ammo. Next on the FN Fall, which is, I gotta say, a close competitor it has the same amount of damage on the bullet like the ak-74 and its unique part uh, its unique trademark is that it loses condition faster so it's a little bit of an unreliable one it is though highly modifiable you have a wide array of different upgrades you can mod this gun into each direction that you want its biggest downside is apart from the faster condition loss it does cost quite a lot of attack points to shoot with it and unmodded it is quite inaccurate but due to the fact that you have a really big um selection of upgrades you can do something about the accuracy um, problem overall i would recommend the fn fall if you have a really good shooter somebody who's good at marksmanship and good at uh dexterity this gun becomes a lot more reliable i think it is among the worst guns though to go for burst or auto fire because of the very low aiming bonus and there's just not that super much what you can do with it if you increase the accuracy a little bit this becomes more reliable but most assault rifles out on the market are just uh, better at that job if you'd like to uh, go there it is, nevertheless, a pretty good upgrade if you're just running a AK-47 yet and you haven't found a AK-74, then the FAL is a direct upgrade because it's just more damage. It has pretty much a very comparable variety of modifications. It just boasts a little bit more damage and it has practically the same drawbacks, except for the condition loss, but we can repair that. All right, moving on to the G6036. Uh, so this one is a really really enjoyable gun we have a over the average damage per bullet it has a really low cost to shoot it it has a high range it has a high aiming bonus it just lacks crit but that's really one of the few bad things you can say about this gun it can be modded into silent gameplay 
even quite cheap. It comes with the capabilities of all bigger tactical devices. We can put, put in a extended barrel, which makes the range of this gun really impressive. And with that aiming bonus, you can really utilize that high range. And you also get to use scopes, but not a wide array of these. But the really nice part it is, is it is moddable in each direction. Although, modding it into Overwatch is a very, very costly ordeal. As you see, you have to put in a chip there. Magazine can be increased as usual, nothing big to say here. And the interesting part here is that we have a light stock that's different that has a different name and uh, i don't know if that's i think ah yeah it's not a graphical bug the stock is just folded in it's here i always thought the uh, visuals were bugged but now i understood what i was seeing wrong there whatever heavy stock is available for you as well to give you more accuracy and um, well this gun is just not good if you want to score critical hits apart from that it's wonderful and nothing bad is to say about it i personally think except for maybe to say that the modifications are a little bit less um a little bit less wide you have only a low amount of options on the different slots moving on to the galil so this is a really really cool assault rifle nice damage nice range high crit, crit chance but lousy long range aiming so this makes it a really good close quarters gun and i i looked it up the part with the bottle opener on the uh, on this gun the built-in bottle opener is not made up it's actually a thing it's a historical thing because the soldiers uh, did ruin the magazines by opening their bottles on it so pragmatic decisions in the design Jokes aside, we have here the typical stock decisions. We can go for a heavy or a light, so we can mod this into accuracy or overwatch. We have magazine upgrades as we know them. We can put in a few different scopes, but I personally think the scopes are a bit of a trap in this gun because the aiming bonus is pretty crappy. I see this as one of the most impressive short to medium range overwatch guns out there on the market, and therefore I would really more recommend the uh, overwatch modifications but that being said there's a lot of uh, you can go for whatever you please by adding an extended barrel and the, those snow uh, those uh, scopes with a really well-trained mercenary you have still a really high accuracy and that critical hit chance that's pretty uh, decent we can also rock this thing short range which decreases the costs which is pretty good because even if you go short barrel on this gun, you still have a pretty decent range, so that's something really to point out here. The bipod can be replaced with a grenade launcher, which I really like because I personally think this is a really good alternative if you don't really even want to try to go ranged with this gun, which is totally, totally feasible. This is the close quarters modification for you. We get to use all the good tactical devices here, and of course we can also put this gun silent or equip it with a compensator. As you might have already noticed, the uh, muzzle upgrades are pretty standard in uh, or, or pretty um same for all those guns it's mostly the question if you get to build an improvised suppressor or not so moving on to the m14 so this is a bit of a uh, old timer so this is none of the high-tech guns an interesting part about this gun is it has a pretty decent damage it's a little bit over average but it comes with a really cool aiming bonus. This is also among the earlier guns, and if you don't like the inaccuracy of the AK-47, it's a really, really good alternative. Also worth mentioning, though, it uses the same ammo as the uh, AK-47, so it's really a very close relative in many, many ways except for historical relations. So, stock-wise, we have the usual, um, we have, we have the usual suspects. What's really amazing about the M14 is the wide array of different scopes that you can use. So this gun can be totally modded into stupidly high accuracy or 
various Overwatch models are also available. So you have a really, really high selection of upgrades here. Same goes for the barrels, and this is already showcasing the strength of the M14. It is highly adaptable. It has lousy base stats on many departments, but you can really crank out whatever you need into uh, this gun by modifying it to your own liking. You even get to use a wide variety of grips, the bipod and a grenade launcher, so here this gun can be totally adapted to your own playstyle. But I gotta give it away right away, this gun is being outperformed by most of the modern day guns. That's just that. It's an old timer and it is good when you find it and you have no alternatives. It's totally worth modding it, but don't expect to be um, growing too attached to it once you find something tasty instead. So moving on to the M16. So here we have again a low damage per bullet. It's sub average again, but it's a very accurate model and it has uh, again no auto firing um, variety. It's quite fun that they stated out like that, that you get no auto fire with the standard stock because as a matter of fact the M16 cannot be modded into auto fire because it lacks the option to mod that stock that you need. So this gun will never have auto fire. One neat thing about it is though it uses 5.56 millimeter ammo. So if you find one of these in the early game or in the earlier stages of the game, you can use it for the ammo mitigation. So what's good about this though? It's a low cost um, shooter. So you can modify it to be very, very action point efficient. We can go for a Overwatch uh, configuration here. We have lots of different scopes to emphasize the aiming bonus that we got already. And we get to use a grenade launcher or a vertical grip. Tactical devices are all available, which is quite nice, and it can be silenced. All in all, it is one of these guns that are, for me personally, more of a placeholder because the damage per bullet is just a little bit low. If I am okay with a low damage per bullet, I'd, pre prefer, I'd be preferring the AR-15 and take that juicy crit chance on top of that. So all in all, this is one of those guns which will probably or even most likely replace over the course of the time. There's a couple of models, namely the M16, the M14, the AK-47 and even the uh, file to some degree but i think this, the file holds up to the later stages of the game quite well with its high damage but the famas is the replaceable bullpup rifle because it just has more downsides than benefits compared to the other guns so there is clearly a visible difference in quality when you're comparing the um, historical ages of these guns and I find that highly realistic. So to put a last point on the list we're going to have a look on the hired gun which is a unique gun that you can find in the game. It's basically just a pimped out Galil. Seriously there's uh, not much more about that. I don't even know where you get that from. Kudos to the people that know this in the comment section. There's really not much to say about it. You can achieve similar things with your own Galil by modding it. I think the high crit chance on it is the only thing which you couldn't modify yourself into the Galil. So that's the end of this list. Next video we're going to go over SMGs, machine guns and heavy weapons. I'm really really looking forward to it and uh, leave me in the comment section any questions or corrections that you might have or additions because there's so much material. There's literally an almost no material on the internet. I did this all on my own research so I actually expect you guys to find something to improve this on and I'm looking forward to learn something so the comment sh section should be after a while quite a nice place to be. So leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe if you want to support the channel without spending a dime. That's just the way to go and it really, really helps me. And apart from that, I put a playlist link down there leading to all the other Jack Lines 3 info videos that I did. Last thing to say for me is I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.